Welcome back to Cinemation Movie Recaps. Today, I show you the movie Django Unchained. Beware of spoilers. The film begins in Texas in 1858, two years before the Civil War, when black Americans were sold into slavery. Six black Americans are shackled by their feet and running behind two white slave traders, Ace and Dickies. One of the black men is Django. They continue to travel uninterrupted. As night falls, they are approached by a stranger, a German dentist riding a horse and carriage. He introduced himself as Dr. King Schultz. He is looking for a slave from the Karakon Plantation. Django, one of the slaves, says he is from the Karakon Plantation. Dr. Schultz asks him if he knows the Brittle Brothers. Django identifies them as Big John, Ellie's, and Roger. Ace doesn't like the way Dr. Schultz talks to Django, so he tells him to leave since they won't sell the slaves to him, which leads to a heated argument. Dr. Schultz kills Dickie and wounds Ace with his gun. He buys Django for $125 and asks him to take the dead man's coat and wear it. He has one of the slaves hold the gun and asks Django to ride Dickie's horse. He then takes Django with him and encourages the rest of the slaves to do what they want with Ace. The next day, Dr. Schultz and Django enter a small town in Daughtry, Texas, where Django is given the evil eye by everyone because he is riding a horse, which slaves like him are not allowed to do. The innkeeper won't tolerate Django in his saloon, so he goes out and calls the sheriff over a glass of beer prepared by Dr. Schultz. He reveals that he is a bounty hunter, not a dentist. Dr. Schultz needs Django to identify the Brittle Brothers for him as they are his next target. The two agree that Django will tell him who the Brittle Brothers are in exchange for a total of $75 and his freedom. When the town sheriff calls them outside to arrest them, Schultz kills the sheriff with a quick shot. The saloon owner then calls the U.S. Marshal, Giltile. When the marshal arrives, Schultz explains that the sheriff, named Bill Sharp, was in fact a wanted criminal and is being pursued dead or alive, and that the town owes him $200. Django and Dr. Schultz then continued their journey. During their stops, Django tells them over dinner that he has a wife and that her name is Brunhilde Hildy from Shaft. Brunhilde was raised by a German mistress of Shaft and can speak German. A flashback from Django's memory shows that he and his wife tried to escape from the Brittle Brothers, who were their owners at the time. However, they were caught by the Brittle Brothers, who tortured Brunhilde physically and Django mentally, and then marked her face with an R, after which they were sold separately. The two reach tennis. Schultz devises a plan to catch the Brittle Brothers. They will pull a stunt in which Django will pose as Schultz's valet. Django dresses decently, and together they drive to a cotton plantation in Gatlinburg, owned by John, Big Daddy Bennett. With the help of one of the servants, Bettina, Django manages to find the Brittle Brothers, also known as the Schaffers. Django finds them punishing a black servant. Another flashback from Django's memory shows the three brothers whipping Broomhilda. When he sees the two Brittles, he immediately shoots John Brittle and whips Roger before shooting him as well. Schultz rides up and kills the third Brittle, Ellie's. He explains to Big Daddy, Bennett his work as a bounty hunter, and that the three Brittles are wanted dead or alive. Later that night, Schultz and Django lure out Bennett and his racist gang, who do not know that Schultz has prepared everything, such as emptying his carriage and setting a booby trap with an explosive. That evening around the campfire, Django curiously asks how Schultz knows that Brunhilde's first master was a German. Schultz explains that Brunhilde is a German name and a popular character in all the German sagas. He told Django about the German saga of Siegfried and Brunhilde and offers to make Django his partner as a bounty hunter and allow him to earn money. Schultz feels responsible for Django and agrees to help him find Brunhilde. Together, they continue the bounty hunt with Schultz, giving Django his first prize money for killing a man named Smitty Backall. During the winter months, they occasionally practice shooting. After the winter and earnings rich months, Schultz takes Django to Mississippi as promised, where Schultz investigates and learns that Broomhilda has been sold to Calvin Candy. 
Candy is the charming but cruel owner of the Candolin Plantation, where slaves are forced to wrestle each other to death in brutal Mandingo fights. Schultz and Django devise a plan. They decide that Calvin will sell Broomhilda too dearly if they try to buy her up front and instead offer $12,000 for one of his best fighters as an excuse to acquire Broomhilda for a small amount on the side. The plan is for Django to convincingly pose as an expert in Mandingo fighting, while Schultz's character is a cash-rich buyer from Dusseldorf who has bought into the Mandingo fighting game and hired Django for his supposed expertise. With the help of Candy's lawyer, Leonide Magai, they meet with Calvin at his gentleman's club. Magai is an old friend of Candy's. With Magai's help, Schultz gathers some information about Mr. Candy. Magai takes them to Candy, who is watching two slaves fight. When the fight is over, Calvin gives the winner's slave a hammer and tells him to use it to kill the slave who lost. At first, Calvin is skeptical of Django and Schultz about their interest in the Mandingo fight. However, when Schultz offers $12,000 to buy a fighter, Calvin becomes curious. Calvin invites them to Candeland. During the trip, the group encounters Calvin's slave sleuths who have cornered Dark Hagnan, a runaway Mandingo fighter. Stone Cipher, Candy's slave owner, has the dogs barking furiously at Dark Hagnan. Candy said he bought each slave for $500 to fight five times as a Mandingo. He orders Stone Cipher to let the dogs loose and let them maul D'Artagnan to death. Schultz tries to save him by paying the $500, but Django intervenes to prevent him from blowing their cover. Calvin is still suspicious of Schultz and Django, as the former is visibly upset when he sees the dogs attacking the slave. At Candeland, Calvin, Django, Schultz, and the rest of the entourage are met by the headhouse slave Stephen Warren. Stephen is Calvin's extremely loyal and manipulative chief slave. He cannot accept seeing a black man riding a horse. He nags Calvin because he cannot accept serving a slave like him. They are also greeted by the widow Lara Lee Candy Fitzwilly, Calvin's sister. Before they entered the house, Schultz asked about the German-speaking lady, but Stephen said the slave girl had been put in the hot box as punishment for trying to escape again. Django restrains himself from shooting her. Calvin says they should get her out and prepare her for the meeting with Schultz in his room. Stephen is against it because, in his opinion, Hildy needs to be punished in the hot box for 10 days, and it is only her first day of punishment. But Calvin says he wants to get her out of the hot box because his guest asked her to, and Stephen can't resist him. Calvin's sister, Lara Lee, presents Brunhilde upstairs to Schultz. In German, Schultz tells Broomhilda about their mutual friend. He tells Broomhilda that he is speaking in German because he does not want anyone to overhear what they are saying. He makes Broomhilda promise not to scream when she sees their mutual friend. However, Broomhilda faints when she sees that her husband Django is their mutual friend. After telling Broomhilda about their plan, Schultz offers to buy her as his companion while he negotiates the first deal over dinner. While Calvin and Schultz talk about Mandingo's fighter, Stephen still doubts Django's motive. He observes Django's gestures and notices that something is different about Hildy. Stephen confronts Brunhilde when they are in the kitchen, but she denies knowing Django. Stephen demands an audience with Calvin and insists that Django and Brunhilde know each other, telling him that the two of them and Schultz are scheming behind his back. Calvin says, it is like a snake biting him and begins to feel indignant. When he returned to the dinner table, he showed the skull of a deceased former slave to intimidate them. Talking to Django, Calvin said he admitted that Django was a smart slave. This was the signal for Mr. Pooch to enter the dining room and point a gun at Schultz and Django as he disarms them. Stephen brings Broomhilda to the dining table. Then Calvin changes the deal at gunpoint to sell Broomhilda for $12,000 instead of the fighter. Schultz reluctantly agrees and gives the money. Calvin asks his friend, the lawyer Mage, to prepare the receipt for $12,000 and the freedom papers for Brunhilde. While they wait for the receipt during dessert, Schultz is disturbed by the music of the harp and he is troubled by the previous scene in which the dogs maul the slave Dartagnan. As Schultz, Django and Brunhilde 
are about to leave. Calvin demands that Schultz shake his hand, which the latter refuses. Calvin threatens to kill Broomhilda if Schultz does not shake his hand to seal a deal. Having had enough of Calvin's arrogance, Schultz shoots Calvin. Butch Pooch, Calvin's bodyguard, kills Schultz, whereupon Django goes on a rampage, killing Pooch, Maibai, and several of Calvin's henchmen, but is forced to surrender as Broomhilda is taken hostage. The next morning Django wakes up in a shed, tortured by Billy Cash, tied up and hung upside down and is about to be castrated when Stephen intervenes. Lara Lee preferred to sell Django to the Lequent Dickey Mining Company, where slaves wield a sledgehammer and turn large rocks into small rocks. Slaves who end up at Lequent Dickey Mining are stripped of their identity and given a number instead. And if the slave speaks, his tongue is cut out. On the way to the mining company, Django devises an escape plan and uses his first wanted poster to prove to his companions that he is a bounty hunter. He claims that the men on the wanted poster, Smitty Bacall and his men, are on Candlelit and promises the escorts a share of the reward. His transporter believes him, as the other slaves confirm that Django was really a horse and a free man yesterday. When they release Django, he quickly executes them, steals their dynamite, and heads back to Candlelit. At Candlelit, Calvin's henchmen have Broomhilda locked in a room while Lara Lee and Stephen prepare Calvin's funeral. Django goes to Schultze's body and retrieves Broomhilda's bill of sale from his pocket, finally freeing her. That night, Django waits in his upstairs hideout for Stephen, Lara Lee, and the rest of the group to return from Calvin's funeral. He shoots Billy Cash and two other henchmen, then the other domestics, and also shoots Lara Lee. He then shoots Stephen in the knees, who tries to hide from the attack. On the way out, Django lights a fuse that causes the dynamite to explode, destroying the mansion. He and Broomhilder ride out into the night together.